Hello. So last time we built up a thread network with two developer kits from Nordic Semiconductors and a F52840 developer kit and OpenThread, um, which was included in the SDK for Thread from Nordic. Today we want to sniff packages from a thread network. In earlier time it was actually quite expensive to uh, uh, get sniffer software and also the hardware for like a IEEE 802.15.4 network like Zigbee or Thread. Um, but today actually we get it really quite cheap. And uh, for this we needing hardware and we using the NIF52840 dongle from Nordic Semiconductor because it's quite cheap. It's uh, just cost around 10 US dollar. You can get it again from Mauser or DigiKey. You see here's a dongle. It has the NIF52840 chip on it. It has a reset button which we have to push from the side, not from the top. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, yeah, uh, different than normal. And we have a button there and LEDs. Uh, we could also program it with a J-Link when we connect it. Um, there are two J, uh, uh, serial wire um, debug uh, pins, but um, it's quite difficult to connect them. We have to solder something or whatever. And also we need an external debugger. So on this dongle there is no debugger included. But we can program this dongle via a bootloader. So we don't need anything except the software from Nordic Semiconductor. We can sniff with this dongle then all IEEE 804.50.4 uh, package, so um, like Thread and Zigbee. Uh, yeah, we will see how it's working. We need for this also a lot of software. First we need the software Wireshark. Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer uh, for Windows. We can download it from the web page. We just go on wireshark.org, just click there on download and uh, download the installer for Windows. I use here the 64-bit installer, just click on it, download it. And uh, when the download is finished, you just click on Wireshark, so execute and install it with the default parameters. Yeah, I already installed it, so I don't need it anymore. Probably after the installing, you have to reboot your computer one time. So next, what we are needing is a plugin for Wireshark and also the sniffer firmware. We can get it from a GitHub repository. We uh, go to this link and uh, just download here the whole repository. We're going on code, download zip file and then uh, we save it also at our computer. Afterwards we are just unpacking it. Yeah, you can do it with WinZip or whatever you're having. And in this folder there are a lot of different files. We're going in the NIF 802.15.4 sniffer folder. There is a BUT file uh, for Windows and a Python file. And these two files are the plug-in for Wireshark. So we have to copy it and copy it into the Wireshark folder. Um, yeah, it's where we installed Wireshark before, uh, it's the default folder is Programmer Wireshark. And there we're going in the XCAP folder. Yeah? And there we just copy these two files that the plugin will be installed. Uh, we're seeing two hex files here, um, one for the dongle and one for the developer kit, but we are using the dongle. We have later to transfer here the sniffer dongle.hex file. The Wireshark plugin, which we just copy into the Wireshark folder, was a Python script and for since we are needing Python version 3.7 or higher, so we have to install it on our computer. For Windows we just go on python.org, um, there we go on downloads 
and just click on download Python, save it to your computer and when it's downloaded just click on the Python execute tuple and there we have to choose at Python 3.10 to our path variable um, and we're going also to customize installation if not it will be only installed for one user and we're having a quite strange um, path for the installation so go on customize here go on next and install it for all user if not you have still the Pass name for one user only. Go and install. We have some program files, Python 310 as folder, and install it. After we install Python, we have to install also a package with the package manager from Python, since our script for the plugin has to open the COM port, the serial port. We need the package PyTherial. For this we open the command uh, line interface from Windows, uh, just type in the search field cmd and it will open and there uh, we are using the packet manager typing in pip install pi serial and then it will be installed. We are having here a few warnings but this is not a problem. We can as the pip is not in the latest uh, version, we can upgrade it, but it's not important for us at the moment. The last software what we are needing is NIF Connect for Desktop. This is a collection of programs for Nordic Semiconductor. We are needing here the programmer. Uh, with the programmer we can transfer the firmware from our GitHub repository to our USB dangle via the bootloader. We just go on the web page from Nordic Semiconductor, the page from NIF Connect for desktop, going on download. And there we download the latest version from NIF Connect's setup. This uh, we just install then, also in the default parameters. When it's finished, we are um, seeing here a few programs. We have here to go down to the programmer and just install the programmer. From this page, after installing, we can then also open the programmer. Before we are flashing now the sniffer firmware to our USB dongle with the programmer app, we want to take a short view on, a, on the memory structure on a NIF52840. When we are using a J-Link programmer, uh, like we did before in the CLI example, we just program our application and the application starts at address zero. So we are having the whole memory for the application available. Um, with the USB dongle, there is a bootloader pre-installed and also a master boot record. It starts at address zero and is the master boot record and is four kilobyte big. And the master boot record jumps then to the address from the bootloader. Bootloader is 120 kilobyte. And uh, when we are pushing the reset button, it jumps into the so-called DFU mode. A device firmware upgrade mode where we can with the programmer app download a new application to our uh, USB dongle. If there's nothing pressed it just jump to the address of the application and runs the application. Uh, we directly want to do this. We're seeing here our USB dongle. We're seeing the green LED is blinking. So we have to put it in the DFU mode first. For this we are pressing here a button on the side, the reset button, just pressing it and now it's blinking red. So we are in a DFU mode. Afterwards we are going to our programmer app, selecting here the device, open DFU bootloader. You are seeing here the memory structure which I described before, we are having here the MBR and the application and at the top the bootloader. Now we are adding our sniffer firmware. 
we just going to the git repository and choosing here the hex file for the dangle sniffer dangle.hex and just click on write and then the firmware will be downloaded to our dongle. Afterwards the dongle going directly in the application mode, uh, blinking green again. We can check before we are trying to connect uh, the dongle with Wireshark, the dongle with um, Putty again. The output, first we have to check the COM port on which our dongle is connected. We are having here our dongle at COM5 at this computer. I already connected the developer kits um, that we are having a little bit traffic uh, from our application before the CLI uh, uh, thread application. So I just open Putty, uh, so COM port 5 with uh, 150,200 bouts again, open it and in the window I can put in commands. One is channels, this is a channel where we are listening something. Um, it's pre-configured uh, with the default channel 11. Uh, it's also so our uh, thread network using this, so this is fine. And we can just go to the receive mode, enter receive, and um, then after a few times, and there are packages coming from our devices. Maybe I make a reset so that this is going a little bit more faster. Yeah, we're seeing here that a lot of packages coming. Of course, we cannot uh, do something with this output really. Um, we need it for this Wireshark because. We having here hex code only and maybe the LQI and the timestamp um, Wireshark with an interpret this. Now we're closing putty to make the COM port free for Wireshark. So we're starting Wireshark and we're getting the starting screen. Here we see already our plug-in, the NIF sniffer for 802.15.4. We can set here preferences like the channel, but we are using the default channel 11 also uh, with our thread network. We didn't change it, so we just keep it like this. We could directly start sniffing when we're having the network started, but um, then we don't see the whole packages. The packages are encrypted and we have to decrypt them. And for this, we have to set a master key. And there we're going on edit, on preferences, then on protocols, and we're searching the IEEE protocol 802.15.4. There we're going on decryption keys, and we have here to set a new key. The default key for, from, for open thread is 00, 11, 22, until FF. I just copy it from here. I will put it also, of course, in the description. Then I place it here. And uh, be careful that there is not a space when you copy something. I did this mistake one time. It took me one hour to find this error. The description uh, decryption key index stays on zero. And um, the key hash we setting on thread hash since this is a thread master key. We could of course also set a Zigbee network here for Zigbee networks, but we are fine here with the thread network master key. After this, we just can start our sniffing process. So we just double click here and this takes a while, so be patient. When the Wireshark starting sniffing, we're seeing here in the upper window a list of packages which are arrived already. And uh, we just can click one on the window in the middle. We're seeing the package in more details. We're seeing the whole headers here from the different layers like the IEEE headers. Uh, six Lopan header, IPv6 header, UDP header, and here's a MeshLink establishment header. This is for the uh, thread network for managing. And uh, we can also 
looks in deeper information like source port and destination port from UDP and so on um, down in the window here we see on the raw code from the frame when we're clicking a part we see also which part of the frame it is this is marked then. Uh, we're having here the thread network from our last video um, it's just a simple CLI thread network and um, we want to send now a UDP package to see if we see it encrypted. So I first check the IP addresses and I make an UDP open and an UDP bind to all addresses on port 1234. And here we make also a UDP open and send an UDP send on this IP address. Copy it, send it here on port 1234 and send the text what I want to send. We see it's here arrived and then we're looking at Wireshark. If you find it here, we're seeing here in UDP package and uh, when we're going on the data part, we're seeing also our text here. Uh, hello is there inside. Yeah? And the UDP port, we're seeing also the destination port is 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, uh, it's quite nice that we can, with really low cost, sniff a thread network. This helps us a lot, especially when we're having later uh, also co-op uh, protocol implemented and we're seeing what we are sending, what's working and what's not for debugging and analyzing. It's quite nice. If we close Wireshark, we're getting an error here uh, which comes from the plug-in. This is because the plug-in using a deprecated package. Uh, the package disutils.sysconfig is deprecated and uh, this is not really a problem uh, since the plugin is still working. With Python 3.12, this um, package will be removed, so then it can be a problem. But probably there will be an update from the uh, Git repository from the sniffer, I guess. But if you are annoyed from this, you can also change the code a little bit. It's not so difficult. Uh, in line 61, we're having the import from the function get python lib from the package this util sysconfig. You just have to replace this with um, the function get pass from the package sysconfig. And in line 189, we have to replace the function get python lib with the function get pass and then with the parameter plotlib for the platform library pass. In the source code from the plugin, it's looking then like this. Yeah, here we're having line 61, this function. We are just import this config and uh, using the function get path. And in 189, here we're having the function get, get python lib and we just replace it with get path and um, with the parameter plotlib. Yeah. When you're starting now Wireshark, um, the error is away and we are not getting disturbed anymore. So this was it for this video. In the next video we will uh, try to uh, make an open thread network with uh, the API, so not uh, anymore over the command line interface. And uh, afterwards, I plan uh, to use also co-apps that we see how this protocol is working and how we can implement this. And then they will be quite useful when we're having also a sniffer stick. See you next time.